Hello there, and welcome to this tutorial on how to use the logic system in Blender's game engine to create objects that replace their own meshes so that it looks like a progress in building. In the first part of this tutorial, I will show you how to set up the logic so that an object replaces its own mesh based on a value that's indicating on how long it's existing already. In the second part of the tutorial, I will show you how to reverse the process and destroy a building again, so change its mesh based on its life amount. This tutorial is based on the game engine that comes with the latest version of Blender. In this first part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up building stages that will automatically change as the building progresses. For that purpose, we need to create some sort of dummy cubes, or later on you will use your real objects that represent the building stages. And I will just use colored cubes to indicate on which stage we are at. So first of all, I'll get a red cube for the early stage, an orange cube for the middle stage, and a green cube to indicate that our building is finished. Now, these three need to be renamed so we know which they are. I will just give them the color names, or orange and green. And we also need to change um, something different. If we now go into this outliner here, so if you got that window open, and click on the little plus next to the object, you will find this second name, the mesh name. We need to change that as well to the corresponding name. So we call this one green, this one orange, and this one red. This will make sense in a second. Now we go back to our first layer and create some sort of dummy cube that acts, our, uh, acts as our baseline. So if we place this cube, the building starts. So now, what do we need to add so that this cube can start building something up? We obviously need some sort of counter that tells the cube when it's finished building. So we'll just add a property to the cube, which might be an integer, and start at 0 and end at 100, for example, so you decide when it ends. And I'll just call that build, so I always know this uh, refers to building. Now we need to set up an always sensor to always add 1 to the property, so we'll get a property actuator and add to the build 1. Now it's important to activate true level triggering, so the always sensor will be triggered again and again and again. And now you can decide on how fast these ones get added. So ex for example at 25 logic ticks, so if we take a look at the game, oh let me activate the debug info, you can see every 25 logic ticks a value of 1 is added, so in a way it builds up. So now, how do we change the model once we reached a certain point? So for to say, so to say, if it's at half its build time, it needs to look like it's nearly finished. So how do we set that up? Again, we need an always sensor that's triggered all the time. And now I'd like to introduce the expression controller. With the expression controller, we can sort of set up conditions. So if something is at this and this value, then you'll execute the following sensor, or the following actuator, sorry. So what will be the following actuator? We want to change the look of the object, so we can go to Edit Object, Replace Mesh. And now we had to rename these red, green and orange cubes, because the Replace Mesh feature uses the mesh name and not the object's name. So first off, we want to start with the red cube. So select the red cube or the red mesh and connect those. Now, obviously nothing will happen as we haven't set an expression yet. But what is our expression? We want the property build. Let me zoom in a bit here. We want the property build to be at a certain point so that the mesh gets changed. In our case, let's say I want Ten to be reached until it becomes red, so we know it's ten. So, if the property build is bigger or equal the value of ten, it will change the mesh to this red mesh. Let's see if this works. Oh, 
as you can see, this worked very well. So now we can do the same thing with our other building stages. Just set up two always sensors, as we still got the orange and the green stage, two more expressions, and two more added object sensors, uh, actuators, sorry, I <laughs> always mess them up, and all on replace mesh, we need the orange and the green mesh still. Again, keep in mind to activate true level triggering, so this always sensor always checks at which value the built property currently is at. So we set this to bigger or the equal of 10. We can then set this to, let's say, 20 and this to 30. Now you can use any sort of expression in here. You probably should take a look at the documentation as there are a lot of things you can do with this. Um, a lot of possibilities, so you could say if it's not um, equal another property, if it's equal another property, if one property is false and one property is true, then true, then this will happen. So you can give a lot of expressions, but I'd only like to introduce this one currently. We will have a look at some more maybe in the future. So now, if I start the game, at the value of 10, it should turn red. At the value of 20, it should turn orange. And at 30, green. So this way we've sort of created yeah, you know, a building progression. If you now replace the red, orange and green cubes with your models, then it looks like a building gets built. Now obviously the counter should stop at some point. For that purpose we can just define that this property adding of 1 may only happen as long as the property is not equal and then define what is called yeah, the end. So what is, at, at which value is the thing built? And with that you can define building times and yeah, how much resources do you need until the thing is built. You could also put this into resources. So whenever 100 gold are added, a new stage arrives and so on and so forth. So let's add this. Only if, so always, but only if it's not 30 yet. So to speed this up, I will add this by 5. And you see, it stops at 30. So now, just as an example, I'd like to show you how this might work with real models. So as you can see, this can be pretty nice to simulate some sort of building progress. The same thing can also be done with destroying buildings. For that purpose, we just need to set up some sort of life or health counter. I will just call that life and give it a value that equals the life amount of this building relative to others, of course. So it doesn't make sense to give a small house a high life uh, amount, but that's kind of basic logic. So what do we want to do now? First of all we need something to damage this. In my case I will just say if I left click this building it will get damaged. Later on I might do tutorials on how to set up turrets or how to shoot something or whatever and if the projectile touches our building then it gets less uh, health. But this kind of equals the same so it doesn't matter how we damage it. So I will just say if the mouse is over this and we hit the left button, it will lose some life. So again, to subtract um, property amounts, we can just go to add and type in a negative number. So let's quickly check if this works. As you can see in the top left, whenever I click the house, it will lose some of its health. So now we can tell it, if it's under a certain amount of health, it will get destroyed. So always check whether the life amount is smaller or the same as 50, then our mesh should get replaced with our, our destruction mesh, so to say. 
I think I even... No, how did I call it? Damage. So I've got two damage meshes. And let's say if our model or our life amount is below or the same as 20, it will get the third model. So let's see if that works. I have to click until I'm coming to 50. And we can see it gets destroyed a bit, <laughs> a little bit. And if I come close to, I think 2020, yes. So it's nearly completely destroyed. So this way you can also destroy buildings. Now, how do we repair them? This is also quite easy. We just need to set up a keyboard shortcut or similar to regain the health. You could, for example, set up a message system. So if something is bought through the uh, HUD, you will gain access to some repairing device and that might repair our house. Or you can invest resources to um, repair the house. So for now, I would just say if a keyboard shortcut is pressed, um, the property will regain some of its health or some of its value, which is health. So I'll say it gets increased by 10. I've also changed the left click um, destruction by minus 10 to minus 10 so that it doesn't take as long. Now, we already got the expressions, the necessary expressions set up so that if we reverse the process, the models will also be reversed because if it's smaller than 20, this model gets used. And if it's smaller than 50, so bigger than 20, the other model gets used. Now we just need a third step to return back to our original model. For that purpose, we will just set up the same expression logic, so always on true level triggering. And now if the life, the life value is bigger or the same as 51, which is the last value before it gets destroyed. So 50 is already the level at which it gets destroyed. Then the mesh is still um, our original mesh build three. So now if we destroy our building and hit X to repair it, you can see it comes back. So this way you can sort of create interaction or switching between models dependent on their life. So that's already it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I will hopefully expand on this in the future. So for example, create objectiles that hit something and reduce the life so that you can build this or use this inside your game. As always, if you have questions or suggestions or encounter issues, just leave me a comment. I will try to solve it. Thanks for watching.